Now, Sugar Crinkles, the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet, is proud to present Gunsmoke. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, the story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Take it easy, Mom. You know your young folks are going to eat when you give them sugar crinkles for breakfast. Yes, boys and girls love sugar crinkles. And no wonder, it's the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. Makes breakfast more fun than a circus. Now, the reason sugar crinkles suit young folks to a T is this. Some sugar-coated cereals they've tried seem too sweet. Others don't seem sweet enough. But when they dip their first spoonful of sugar crinkles, mmm, they've discovered a sugar-coated cereal that's just right sweet. And say, those young folks of yours love to dip into the pack and eat sugar crinkles as a snack, too. So better get several packages. And now, Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. Mr. Dillon? Look at those men down there by the jail. Yeah, that's quite a crowd. Well, now, what's so curious about a wagon load of buffalo hide, you wonder? Uh, maybe they got a white one, Chester. They must have something mighty interesting. Yeah. Uh, this your wagon, mister? Nope. It's Gatlas. I skinned for him. What's the crowd for? Just curious. The other skinner got hurt, and we brought him into the dock. Oh, what happened? Is he hurt bad? Bad enough Gatliff didn't see any sense in bringing him into town at all. Me and the cook, we made him, though. What? Oh, here's Gatliff now. Uh, Chester, go up to Doc's and see what you can find out, huh? Yes, sir. How is he, Gatliff? Eh, uh, Doc will take care of everything, Toby. Never mind that. How is he? He's dead. Let's drive his hides on down to the shed, huh? Come on. Just a minute, Gatliff. Some other time, Marshal, I'm busy. So am I. But I want to talk to you anyway. Yeah. You and the cook go get these hides unloaded, Toby. I'll be right along. Okay. Now, what do you want, Marshal? What happened to your Skinner? Billy? He hurt himself, that's all. He's dead, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's dead. He got hurt and he died. That's all. When did he get hurt? Uh, last night. Then why didn't you bring him in last night? And them other fellas, the cook and Toby, they figured he was done for anyway. They didn't want to bother, I guess. What happened to him, Gatliff? How did he get hurt? I don't rightly know, Marshal. He was, uh, alone in camp, and when we got there, he'd gone and burned himself. Burned? With uh, what? Hot lead, Marshal. Spilled it all over him. Lead for bullets? Yeah, that's it. He was cooking up lead in a fry pan. That was one of Billy's chores to make my bullets. <laughs> he always was a mite clumsy. <laughs> he sure messed himself up this time. That must have been a lot of lead. Yeah, 50, 60 pounds, I reckon. Mr. Gatlin, mm. that man of yours docks all through with him. He said you can bury him now. Oh, no, I ain't paying for no burial. He's just a skinner I hired. I don't even know his last name. You're his boss, aren't you? You brought him in here. He's just a bum who worked for me. Well, um, oh, I mean... Hold it, Chester. All right, Gatliff, we'll take care of him. He caused me trouble enough. I don't want to hear no more about him, ever. What about the skinner, Chester? Tell me. Oh, it was terrible, Mr. Dillon. 
Doc said he don't know how he lived as long as he did. Did he talk to Doc? Oh, goodness, no, the poor fella. How do you suppose it happened, Chester? Why, a hot lead. Had a whole pan full of it, they told me. Yeah, but what man's going to pick up 50 or 60 pounds of molten lead and spill it all over him? Oh, well, he... I hadn't thought of that. Because there's another way it could have happened. How's that? Somebody could have pushed him down into it. Oh, my. Who? I don't know. Gatliff or maybe his skinner, Toby. I wonder where Toby went. He probably went over to the Alifraganza to drink up his wages. Oh, all right. Um, Chester, go do something about burying that man, huh? Yes, sir. I'll tend to it. <laughs> Hello, Toby. Huh? Oh, hello, Marshal. Uh, Sam. Yeah? Set out a bottle of rye and another glass, huh? Sure, Marshal. I'll, uh, buy you a drink. You will? Well, sure, Marshal, sure. Well, Toby, here's to your friend, Billy. He was no friend of mine, but he died a bad death. I'll drink to him. Uh, tell me something, Toby. How did he and Gatliff get on? You noticed Gatliff's eyes, Marshal? I did. He got powder specks shot into them. They look like turkey eggs. Yeah. You don't get on with a man like that. How come I've never seen him in Dodge before? A man's greedy, Marshal. He's downright wicked about money. He figures he can save time, make more money by selling his hides to buyer's agents on the prairie. He gets less out there, but he can kill and sell more that way. Well, he came in with a load of hides today. Just because we made him come in with Billy. Oh. Uh, tell me about the accident, Toby, huh? Well, oh, thanks. Uh, <clears throat> Billy was melting lead in a fry pan, and the way I figured, he must have tripped somehow and fallen smack into it. When we rode in, we found him rolling around on the ground. That's all I know. When who rode in? Me and the cook. Well, where was Gatlin? Oh, he went in just ahead of us. How long ahead of you? Not long. Maybe 20 minutes. Ah. And then he found Billy first, is that it? Yeah, so he did. I hadn't thought of that before, Marshal. So that's why you've been asking so many questions. Well, I wasn't sure, Toby. But I expect you're telling the truth. The cook could back up your story. And sure. I'm telling the truth. So that's what happened. Gatluff killed him. He murdered him. Any idea why he would? Sure I do. He killed Billy so he wouldn't have to pay him his wages due. we have been out four months. He must have owed Billy seven, eight hundred dollars. Uh-huh. Are uh, you going back out on the prairie with him? I ain't afraid of him. But I'll be sleeping with one eye open from now on. And if you let on you're suspicious, he'll sure try to kill you. Not me. He can do his killing on somebody else. You, uh, you'll be leaving in the morning, I suppose, huh? About dawn, I reckon, soon as Gatliff hires new Skinner. Uh-huh. Well, uh, the bottle's yours, Toby. And, uh, good luck. Oh, I sure do thank you, Marshal. <laughs> Later in the day, Chester and a couple of other men buried Billy out on the hill. As Toby said, he died a bad death. And it was made worse by the man who had done it to him going scot-free. But there was nothing I could do, and I tried to forget about it. They left Dodge next morning, and things were peaceful enough for a few days until... One night word came that there'd been a knifing in a nester camp across the river... We rode over to see what it was about. He was knifed in the back, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, but nobody saw it happen, Chester. No, sir. Looks like somebody got clean away with murder. Well, well here's Yorkie Kelly. How are you, Yorkie? Hello. Well, what are you doing here, Yorkie? I came looking for berries. It's a good thing I did. Oh? Uh-huh. What do you mean? I saw that man get stabbed. What? You did? 
I heard them arguing, and I sneaked up just after he'd done it. They were all alone. Well, who did it, Yorkie? Did you recognize him? I never saw him before. Well, what did he look like? He was big, dirty looking. He had a buckskin shirt. Yeah. What? Anything else? He had funny eyes, Marshal. They had spots in them. Oh. Chester? Hmm? Gatliff. Hmm. Well, how in the world could you ever sneak up close enough to see his eyes, Yorkie? I live with the Arapahoes. Yeah. By golly, that's right. I'd... You know who did it, Marshal? Well, I do now, Yorkie. Thanks to you. I hope you catch him. I gotta get back. Moss Grimmett's waiting for me. So long, Yorkie. I guess it was Gatliff, all right, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Seemed like a dangerous kind of a man to be running loose. I got him now, Chester. As soon as I find him. Oh, I hope so, Mr. Dillon. I certainly do hope so. Mother, it does your heart good, I know, when your young folks eat all of their breakfast cereal. And that's why I'm so happy to tell you about new sugar crinkles. Sugar crinkles, you know, is the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. Crisp golden nuggets of sugar-coated rice. They make breakfast more fun than a circus. Why, young folks love sugar crinkles so much, they disappear like magic. Now, you've had experience with sugar-coated cereals that seem too sweet to you, and others that uh, just don't seem sweet enough to the youngsters. Well, what a wonderful surprise sugar crinkles will be to your whole family. For new sugar crinkles really are just right sweet. Remember, sugar crinkles make great snacks, too. Better get several packages. For your breakfast or a snack, you love sugar crinkles. Sugar crinkles can't be beat. Sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. With milk for the breakfast joy. That's a snack from the pack, oh boy. Can't be beat, just right sweet. Sugar crinkles good to eat. Now back to gun smoke. Since Gatliff would figure nobody had seen him, it wasn't likely that he'd run. And anyway, there wasn't much sense in trying to track him down in the dark. So Chester and I didn't start out until the next morning. Ordinarily, a man could ride into the prairie and disappear, but with Gatliff, it was a little different. At least we knew he'd be somewhere around Buffalo. It was late afternoon before we reached good hunting grounds and... Almost dark when we spotted the first hunter's camp. Come on over to the fire, stranger. Well, thank you. Supper will be ready soon. Hey, sir, throw some more tongue in that stew pot. Yo, please. You don't like buffalo tongue, you'll go mighty hungry in this camp. <laughs> Thanks, mister. Hey, you're a lawman. Uh, Matt Dillon, a U.S. Marshal. My name's Tom Mercer. Uh, this is Chester Proudfoot. Mr. Mercer. Howdy. Uh, supper will take a little longer yet. Anyway, my Skinners won't be in for a while. Sit down. Oh, thank you. Well, how you doing? Oh, fair, Marshal, fair. I killed over a hundred today. Oh? Uh, been here long? About a month. I'll move on a couple of weeks. I don't know, Marshal. I figure this whole southern herd's gonna be clean wiped out for a long. Next year, I'm going to Dakota. Too many hunters, maybe, huh? That's just it. I said exactly. Have, uh... You seen any in the last day or two? Just who are you looking for, Marshal? A fellow by the name of Gatliff, a big man. Speckled eyes. Uh, what's they done? You know him? No, I don't. Nobody's come near us in oh, over a week. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're not much help, then. Except for that stew the cook's making. <laughs> oh, you're like that. 
Yeah, we're having dried apples, too. I mighty near could eat a buffalo raw, the entire beast. Hey, you must be part Injun. Yeah, well, no, I've sir. seen one of them eat a whole liver raw. Oh. <laughs> yes, sir, he got propped up against a tree and ate every bit of it. And then went sound asleep, right there in the sun. <laughs> he was sure some sight. Where'd you ever get that close to an Indian? Oh, Indians ain't always bad. No, that's true. But they're gonna get real hungry when the herd's gone. That's so, Marshal. That's surely so. That's what makes them mad. Well, don't you think that's reason enough? Fella told me a couple of weeks ago he run into a bunch west of here. He was looking for scalps, all right, too. They... Oh, hey, here comes my Skinners. Now we can get outside of some of that stew. Oh, oh fine. Oh, <laughs> don't you ever feed this man, Marshal? <laughs> Only when he works, Mercy. Oh, no, Mr. Dillon. We spent the night in Tom Mercer's camp, and at dawn, just after breakfast, we said goodbye and rode on west. In the next two days, we met plenty of hunters, but we didn't find Gatliff. About noon of the third day, we cut the trail of a wagon train and figured it to be that of a hide buyer's agent who had come out into the prairie to do business on the spot. An hour or two later, we saw him. A long string of ox-drawn wagons piled high with hides. There was a man on horseback leading the train. We rode up to him. Hello there. Ah, that's quite a load you got, mister. Ten thousand so far. Huh? What are you doing way out here, Marshal? I'm uh, looking for a hunter by the name of Gadloff. You know him? Sure do. Just picked up a load from his rick early this morning. Is he in trouble? Yeah. Where is he? Straight south, a couple of miles. Can't tell you exactly. He moves around a lot. Well, that's close enough for us. Thanks a lot, mister. Sure, Marshal. Nobody like him anyway. There's an empty rick. That must be it. Yeah. But he's moved his camp. Not far. If it was just this morning. Chester. Hmm? What's that out there? Where at? It looks like a man. Come on. Why, Mr. Dillon, it's that Skinner of his. Yeah. Uh, get some water, Chester. Yes, sir. Toby. Toby. Toby, can you hear me? He's been shot, Chester. Here's the water. Yeah. <laughs> Toby. It's Marshal Dillon. Huh? Give me a drink. Yeah, here. <laughs> he shot me, Marshal. Well, what happened? Where's the rest of the crew? They run off. Took his wagon and, and the horses. He went kind of crazy when he found out. That, that's why he shot me. Where is he now? Uh, I don't know, Marshal. He shot me... And, and then he said he was going hunting. He's going loco. Now, 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 take it, take it easy, Toby. Take it easy. You're going to be all right. I, I could hear him shooting that sharps a long time. And then he stopped. Where was he? Uh, which way, Toby? Off. Behind me there. I could hear him. Yeah. Chester, stay with him, huh? I'm going after Gatliff. All right, you. Off in the direction Toby had indicated, there lay a large, isolated hollow surrounded by low ridges. When I reached it, I dismounted and crawled up to where I could look down into it. There was no sign of Gatliff. But lying on the prairie floor were the bodies of countless fresh-killed buffalo. It was a strange sight. The old bulls and the cows and the little calves lying there, blackening the prairie grass. I got up and stood looking at it for a long time. And then suddenly, out in the middle, I thought I saw a slight movement. And a second later, there came the familiar boom of a Sharps 50... 
and I dropped behind the range and waited. And then Chester rode up. Did you find him, Mr. Dillon? Yeah. I thought I'd better come along. You see... Toby's dead. Is that it? Yes, sir. All right. Well, Gatliff's down there in the middle of the hollow, but we can't get anywhere near him as long as he's got that sharp's rifle. He's killed a small herd of buffalo in there, and now he's lying out in the center of them. Well, that's the darndest thing I ever heard of, Mr. Dillon. He must have gone crazy, just like Toby said. Yeah. What's he shooting at now? Hey, Mr. Dillon, the way he's spacing them shots... Yeah, that's the signal for help, Chester. Come on. Say, maybe it's just a trap. Oh, be ready to take cover behind one of these animals. It might be. <laughs> Sounds like he's been hurt. Yeah. Just keep your head up. Mm. There he is. Find well, that big bull. Yeah, I see him. Wow. Well, Mr. Dillon, he... He's all... There have been horses in here, Chester. Indians. Oh, my goodness. Come on. That was his last effort, Chester. He's dead now. Mr. Dillon, that's awful. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Chester. Let's get out of here. I don't know how the Indians caught Gatliff. He'd gone a little mad, and maybe that made it easy for him. But they'd finally got themselves a buffalo hunter. And into their unbelievably savage torture of him had gone all the hatred and desperation of a race being slowly starved and driven from their homeland. And then they'd put him there, surrounded by his own bloody slaughter. And they'd gone off with a gesture of contempt, leaving his rifle and his ammunition by his side. And having seen what they did to him, I'll never know how he managed to fire even one of those shots. For all of his evil, Gatliff had died harder than any man I'd ever seen. Chester and I rode back to Dodge, and it was never mentioned between us again. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll tell you about next week's adventure on Gunsmoke. You know, what you are tomorrow depends on what you eat today. So, Mother, be sure that the big and little Indians at your house always eat a good breakfast. And tell me, what could be better for breakfast than Post Toasties? Post Toasties, you know, are the heap good cornflakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. But all of the talking in the world couldn't tell you how downright delicious Post Toasties are. You have to taste those crackling crisp flakes. Yes, you have to taste that sweet kernel corn flavor toasted. Then you'll know how perfectly wonderful breakfast can be. Put Post Toasties in your shopping list right now, Mother. Just watch how your whole tribe goes for them. Remember, Post Toasties are the heap good corn flakes. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was written especially for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Tom Tully, John Daner, Richard Beals, Jack Edwards, and Louis Jean Height. Harley Bear is Chester. Ken Peters speaking. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, meets a killer at a stage station during his fight to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke.
Listen next week at this time when Gunsmoke will be brought to you by Post Toasties, the heat good cornflakes.